My name is Matt, welcome back to the shop. And um, we're talking about efficiencies of engines. Um, <laughs> you get these comments where say, well, doesn't that just break the third law of Newton's, uh, you know, Newton's law of motion? And, oh, well, you could have just said thermodynamics. And, oh, God, thermodynamics, don't get me get started with that. Thermodynamics is boring as fuck, right? And as soon as I start going on about entropy and fucking, oh, I, yeah, all that kind of stuff, it, it, people are just going to switch off. The fact of the matter is, is you can do, you can go through all these rules, but the thing is, if people understood those rules, we wouldn't have to do a video about it or explain anything. This is when you want to understand the very, very basic ground physics of it, and then you basically can apply that to anything. We're talking about engines here, so a good way, I thought was a good way, to explain where you can go from 100% efficiency all the way down to 30% efficiency, is to show what an engine would look like at 100% efficiency. And when you see that, you go, well, that's not possible. The piston can't go from there and then instantly be here. And so on and so on. And no friction and no heat loss and no heat transfer. People understand that. And when you make it relative like that, it seems to make sense. Regardless, you know, it, all of these things are just hit and miss in a sense. Sometimes I come out with something that explains something really well. Sometimes it needs more or it is a bad example. She happens. Not a bloody teacher, and I ain't got a syllabus to go by. Um, so, people were saying, this was it, and a few people said this over time, where is the future in engines? You know, all right, so we're at 35% efficiency, and then people are talking about the F1 thing. The F1 thing, if you actually read it, Mercedes had this testbed engine. Right, when you use a testbed engine, basically, in a lab, the problem with that is, is you can control everything. You can control the load. You can everything squeaky clean because they put it together perfectly. You know what I mean? Everything is um, everything's brilliant. You can control air densities and temperatures. It's not real world, and so on. So that's the you know people say laboratory laboratory tests or laboratory tests. Um, you know why? You know why is that not? It's not a real world application because there are other things to consider. You know, airflow, stuff like that. Um, but anyway, you know, it's, it, 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 it is just the way it is. And when you actually look at the articles about that, um, because obviously they hide a lot of it. When you look at the articles about the F1 thing, they are using energy, energy recovery and stuff like that. It is not 52% efficiency from the combustion chamber. They fucking wish. And I fucking wish. <laughs> so people are saying, you know, what's next? Where do you go from here? How do you increase it? Well, if you do know, please uh, send me all your data information. Burn all your copies. Send me them and I'll see you in a couple of years when I become a billionaire. <laughs> it is a good question. And that is what we are trying to do as a, a species. That's what we're trying to do. We are trying to get these efficiencies up. But it is difficult. Um... We'll start talking about diesel and the way that it burns and how that actually increases thermal efficiencies and one of the differences between diesels and petrols about how longer chain molecules and shorter chain molecules and stuff, how they react, how they release their energy and so on. Um, but there's a, lot of, there's a lot to do with efficiencies and stuff like that. But let's actually get back to the initial question is what is the future? That is the problem. Now... They're doing this pre-chamber mix stuff in Formula One, um, this jet ignition thing. Um, one of the problems is, is if you go from one state of trying to just combust an entire cylinder, um, it doesn't quite work that way because of mixing issues, turbulence, how you have lamina and turbulent combustion flame fronts and all the rest of it. We'll go through all this. We need to break this down into simple chunks, otherwise it'll go over most people's heads. Um, but basically what you can do is, if you can, in a sense, have two cylinders, in a sense, so you can use your rich mixture to ensure that you get a flame front. That's what you're after. You're after that kernel, and then you're after that kernel expanding that flame front. Then what you can do is you can then run leaner mixtures in your other cylinder. This is something that's actually been used with diesels for a long time. Diesels used to have, or some diesels still do have, but they used to have uh, pre, uh, pre chambers, pre combustion chambers like this, where you'd have an injector in here and then you'd have a glow plug in there like that. And then basically you start combustion off in here 
and then you're ready to rock and roll, that kind of thing. Um, it means that you can have this separate thing. And in a sense, that's what they've done in Formula One. They've just managed to do it with petrol instead of um, diesel. Now, you know, will this find its way to commercial things? Probably not. We're probably going to run out of time and electric is probably going to take over. Um, it is quite expensive. It's more parts. It's more everything. It's just more control. And uh, people have been asking a lot about energy recovery systems for bikes like rec regenerative braking. Probably never going to... I'm going to say it never happened, but you never know. Someone always does something just to prove you're wrong. <laughs> um, but no, the, the, the big thing with regenerative braking is that, is that you need to be able to recover that energy. That's one way. But then you also need to be able to put that energy back into the system. So with Formula One and with some of these cars and stuff, they have um, an engine and then they have their brake system, which is what bikes have as well. But then they'll have to have some kind of motor system and in a sense a generator. Now you can try and make generator motors. They're quite expensive. Um, quite a sensitive setup. But basically you make... You have to have some way of applying that power back to the engine. And that is the problem because this costs money and it costs weight. And bikes are trying to get lighter and lighter and lighter with what they've got. Trying to do this with bikes just seems like madness because you're now going to have to add a motor in and all the rest of it. And the reason is with cars is that cars, uh, you know, the only reason why Formula One are doing a lot of these things is because their hands are tied by the rules, the amount of fuel they can carry. So they will, they can take a weight hit. Um, you know, some of these cars, or some drivers and stuff, they have lead mass in them just to get them right up to the right weight. I don't know how current that is. I don't have to do that anymore, but I know they used to. But if the, your revs are limited or your fuel capacity is limited, then they are going to find other things that aren't in the rules. Well, they don't limit, and limit us on how many electric motors we can have, or if we can have this. Or sky's the limit when it comes to weight. So then there's this compromise, this balancing act of, well, if we add this motor in here and this battery system, that increases the mass by 6%. However, we can recover 20% of the energy and actually um, keep on going. You see, that's the thing is that just say you've got a hundred litres of fuel right and that hundred litres just say if you go wide open throttle around Imola that will get you to here and the finish line is here so you have two options you can either reduce the amount of power the engine makes so this is reduced Oops, reduced power that will get you to the finish line. Or you can up the weight, you can have this regenerative, regenerative um, these systems that basically, you know, like I say, regenerative braking, stuff like that, where you can go wide open throttle, but your shortfall there is motor. This is energy recovered. Right, because otherwise this energy <coughs> that where does this come from this is the waste heat just say be it waste heat through your exhaust system or be it waste heat through your brakes you accelerate to 100 mile an hour then you slam on it's just pissing out your brakes that's fucking no good is it so what you get instead is you get a wide open throttle thing like this you get to the end and then through all your braking points and stuff like that you fill it in with the motor and when you add them all up, that equals that, and that equals that, and you're all good. You're all good to go. Now, you could use more fuel, but you, no. You, if you use more fuel like they did back in the day, you could go wide open throttle the thing. But the rules have changed. That's the only thing that's changing here, is just the rules. So the Formula One guys can go to extremes because money's pretty much no object to them fuckers. You know, they can go to some extremes and use whatever systems that they can think of, they can dream up, to get you here. And basically what it is, is just say your waste heat was, I don't know, 
fucking 50 litres of fuel. Instead here, you've, you, you know, you're wasting 30 litres of fuel. You've still got that waste heat, you know, the exhaust is still spitting out. But they're recovering some of that and putting that back in through the motors and stuff like that instead of just warming up the earth with their brake discs. What is quite upsetting <laughs> is that if you fill your tank for your bike with 10 litres, 7 litres of that is heating up the earth. It's like central heating, just really shit. <laughs> Literally, if you put 10 litres in your bike, 7 of those litres is warming up your engine and warming up the earth. It is absolutely ridiculous when you think about it that way. So basically, what you should do is go to the guy at the petrol station and say, he says, that's, uh, that's uh, 10 litres, you know, that's 15 quid or 14 quid or whatever. You'll be like, yeah, but I'm heating up the world, so really I should get some money back on that. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> kind of bullshit. Literally, that is it. If you have 10 litres, 70, 7 litres out of that 10 is just heating up stuff around you, which is a bit of a shame. Now, back to the Formula One thing and regenerative, regenerative, regenerative braking and stuff like that. Like I said, with bikes, it's not going to happen because weight is everything to bikes, absolutely everything. Yes, it's very important in Formula One, and it's the rule change that has made them do this. With bikes, um, we do not have a limit on fuel. There is emissions limits and stuff like that. And emissions, I know Formula One probably have an emissions limits as well, but um, for us, you know, mere mortals and all the rest of it, uh, emissions is the main concern for manufacturers, which goes hand in hand a bit with combustion and stuff like that, so it's good and gravy. But, um, you know, if you're burning less fuel to get from here to 20 miles away, then you're going to produce less emissions, it's a no-brainer. But, um, yes, this regenerative... They, they will do it with cars and stuff like that. Like I said, they can get away with it. They can just not put so many speakers in your car if they were really... if they had a limit on weight. Because the population don't have those kind of restrictions yet, um, you know, it, it, it's not the same thing. So the, the, the technology and stuff, they're splashing out on Formula 1. Some of it trickles down, don't get me wrong. I'm sure there's regenerative braking in the Tesla and all that kind of shite because they've already got them systems in place. But for bikes, adding an extra motor and then the drive to do that and stuff, it's like, fucking forget it. They are skimping down. That's why the Panangali V4 has a decompression circuit um, because they want to skim down on the weight of the fucking starter motor. Because as soon as you start your bike, that starter motor is useless. You're just carrying around that weight. They want to slim that down so basically this motor has less torque, but it doesn't require it because they use a decompression circuit so it's easier on the motor so they can use a light motor and bikes have been using like the SV you know the SV it's what 19 years old now the design probably a bit later than that with the decom I don't know when the decompression circuit came in for the SV maybe this was the first one but you see what I mean it's quite an old system and Ducati are now having to do stuff like that um, to reduce the weight and make these bikes better and better year on year on year hope that makes sense and I'll see you in a bit